Hi guys, hello again. Um, a few of my friends have mentioned to me um, in the past that I should have done a video on this, but it was a project I did a long time ago. Uh, I mean, I used to do write-off vehicles. Uh, used to buy them from um, people like Copart, Motorhog, I think they're called Sin Sinec or Syntec now. Uh, and you'll see them on salvage rebuilds on YouTube quite a lot. Uh, and I did quite a lot of vehicles, um, motorcycles and scooters. I did over 150 motorcycles and scooters that were categorised as write-offs and rebuilt them. Some of them were mechanical damage, some had wheel damage, brakes, um, electrical. Uh, some had been dropped, crashed and uh, needed bodywork. Well, I've always been pretty good at bodywork, really. So, um, you know, I'd put new fairings on or I'd buy a second-hand fairing and repaint it. Uh, and I got quite good at painting too. Um, but one of the things I did do, and I right enjoyed it, um, was a particular camper van, uh, which I think had been stolen and recovered, I think. You never actually know. But I think it'd been stolen and recovered and it looked like it'd been reversed into something. And it was a pretty sorry state. Um, the back door were all mangled and the back corner. But camper vans uh, pretty much made, this were a Peugeot box, boxer. Um, and they're pretty well made, uh, pretty much made, should I say, of fibreglass. And fibreglass is something that you know, you take two pieces of fibreglass that are broken in half and you bond them back together. It's literally like welding two pieces of metal back together in such that it's just as strong. Uh, and in my case, of what I did, probably a lot stronger than the original. The um, body panels were made of fibreglass, obviously I'm saying, but they were very thin and flimsy and you know you could give them a good press and they'd all bend all over the place so when i rebuilt this one uh, all the fiberglassing i did that you're going to see uh, i reinforced it i mean like to give you an example at the back of the vehicle right across the back underneath there's the uh, wrap under uh, and it just ended uh, and then the auto crews who built this thing I just put like a rubber piece of matting that just hung down over it. When you lifted it up, looked underneath it, it really thin fiberglass, no support whatsoever. Uh, so that, I, I bonded stainless tubing into that and bonded it all in all the way along. So I actually made it a lot stronger than the original. And as, as you'll see in the video, there's more still pictures than there is a video, although there are some video clips I did at the time. I mean, this was before I even built this workshop that I did that. Um, you'll see me talking about UPVA in it, and I'll just show you, but when you talk about UPVA, you think about wood glue, the white stuff you mix with water, thin it down, glue, you can put it on before you plaster a wall, it bonds to brickwork, blah, blah, blah. This is not the same stuff. This is for uh, UPVA, it's a release agent. And you can see that, it's just like water, blue water. You put that in your spray gun, you don't thin it, you put it in as it is, and you spray your panels that you've done. So when I made my um, female moulds, and I made sure they were all smooth and they have been done with gel coats, so they were lovely and smooth, uh, there's two or three different ways that you can make it to release fibreglass when you do the moulding. One of them is to use wax. In fact, hang on, all that thought, and I'll, I've got the wax. I'll show you what you use. If I can find it. Honey wax. That's, it even tells you a lot. It's a mould release agent and you wax and polish your mould um, and then when you actually do your fibreglassing, your gel coat, 
fiberglass, do whatever you're doing, when you let it cure and pull it out, it comes out without sticking. Otherwise the two parts stick together and you just can't get them apart, it's ruined. The other way is using that. Now the guys, and you'll see this little film clip that I put in, um, of how it's professionally done. I'll probably edit it and say that, how the professionals do it. And these guys, they're at Castleford, West Yorkshire. Uh, and this is why, where I bought all my fiberglass matting, my, uh, my gel coat, my UPVA. I bought everything there, activator, acetone. Uh, and it wasn't expensive, very, very cheap. The whole cost of the uh, rebuild probably was... <sighs> £400, probably, plus a door, which I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for, but the door that you'll see, the new door, was listed at over £1,500, and the lock were another £100. The step, the retracting step, they're about £150, um, and the step, what you step into when you step into the van, I had that remade because that were made from fiberglass originally and it were all split and broken and I, and I had one made out of steel uh, so I made it again a lot stronger than the original and again you'll see it all completed and finished. Uh, the other stuff that you'd use it, it, before you start fiberglassing you always gel coat and that's white gel coat. This is how long ago it was, can you see how it's all sunk, it's shrunk in, it's still liquid and I'm sure I could still use it. I used probably oh, four gallon, maybe four gallon of resin, clear resin in it. A uh, small amount of activator. Again, the activator, you have to be very careful with it. I used between two and three percent. use, it all depends on the temperature. I'm talking to you like I'm an expert on fiberglassing. I've never done it before tell you that right now I've never done fiberglassing before I've never read articles on it or anything I just thought I'm gonna have a go if it can be done I'll have a go at it and which, which is what I did if you put in warm weather two percent it's ample of activator into your fiberglass resin it'll go off in 20 25 minutes if you put three percent in it'll go off in probably 15 minutes in colder weather it goes off much slower so you might want to put a little bit more activator in if you go over six oh, percent you risk a fire especially if it's a warm day put six percent or more of this activator in i use an hypodermic syringe that read in milliliters uh, into the mix uh, and you, it will set on fire i always remember my old morris minor uh, that would wing yeah, the whole car were rotten it was my first car Morris Minor Traveller, but uh, I fiberglassed one of the wings up and I mixed some resin up that I'd bought from Alfred's, you know, I'm telling you you can get. And I put loads of this activator in. It's set on fire. That's with too much activator, that's how strong that stuff is. I'm digressing and talking loads of rubbish here, but uh, I hope you enjoy this video because I was quite proud of what I did. Uh, and when I finished it, I know Salvage Rebuilds always tells you what he paid for some of that. particular vehicle came from Copart. It was category C then, which is category N now, non-structural damage. Underneath there were a lot of damage, but one of the, like the water tank holder and the jacks, which I removed and I straightened and re-welded and I cleaned the tank and there, there were no damage. And, I made new brackets and framework, put all that back, and I undersealed all the underneath when I'd done it. Uh, and I made about seven and a half thousand pound profit on it, so it's not to be scoffed at. Uh, I was gonna do quite a few more, but I didn't, I didn't do any more. I, I, I just did the first couple, and then I didn't bother after that. Um, anybody who knows me will know why I'm saying I did a couple, and I didn't do any more, mainly cars, really. Uh, MX-5s, I did quite a few of them, well, I did two of those uh, and the same motorbikes and scooters. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video, it's just a bit different from what I normally do. Normally it's, it's all engineering stuff and I hope you enjoy it. 
Um, anybody that thinks about having to go fiberglass in, don't hesitate, guys. Don't hesitate. It's so easy, fiberglass, because fiberglass and fiberglass just join together. It's just something that you bond together. I mean, if you used to see the state of the old lotuses and the craze on the doors and the damage that, well, they're not damaged, they used to craze uh, from the factory. In fact, if you look at Reliant Scimitar, if you remember them, the doors and panels, they used to be like that. They were awful um, because they were too thin. They hadn't been bonded strong enough and they didn't have any reinforcers in. That's another thing, if you're doing fiberglass, you've got to reinforce it. If you reinforce it, stable as hell. Don't reinforce it, it's loose as hell. I'm digressing, so on to the video. Right, don't know how this is going to work out. Need to get this camera set up somewhere. Well, first of all, that's a, a moulding one I'm just doing. That's the, damn it, the bodywork. This has come off, look. That's come delaminated. Basically, that's uh, the male mould taken out of a, a, a female mould that I made to replicate what needs to go in there, which is a copy of this in reverse. I got the camera out was to show that I'm breaking out of the mould this which is a piece I made of the copy of the back of the van and that's the female mould which I've taken from that and then this is the male mould that I'm going to just break out next. So, there you go. I don't know where I'm going to put this. This is used PVA. Polyvinyl alcohol which helps it break out and spray the mould. So, there we go, female mould, 
no longer needed. And that should be my part. I'm not to believe that this is water soluble but it just comes off. Which it does. But I'll just wash it with water. Then that one's trimming and that's my piece that fits on the back of the mat. Which looks actually something like. Well, I'm on. Another go with this. It's setting. The side of the van were destroyed, and this is a, a replica of it. Um, and I got these floats cut in. Just take a female mould off this, but this needs chamfering back, this edge and this edge need to be chamfered back, there's a rubbing strip goes in there uh, and I've tried sanding it, it's hopeless, I've ordered a, a plane because a normal plane you've got the edge there where it's casting where there's a, a rebate plane, the blade comes right to the edge so I can get in and do the chamfers and have these chamfers and then a piece to add and then that's going to be another mould as you call that, the plug. Uh, right, I'll turn it off at that.
Right, it's Sunday. Uh, this is the mould I made yesterday. I'm just releasing it now, breaking it away to get it out. It's taking a bit, taking a bit of doing, but it's coming. Here we go. A uh, bit of damage. That's my original MDF, and that's my mould. To take a mould from, actually, that doesn't matter there, because that's part of the other bit. I can rub that off. So, this needs loads of work now, because this is what the finished product's going to look like. So. I've got lots and lots of rubbing down to do. Maybe filling. Although I don't know about filler. I think it just wants a bit of rubbing down, especially where these floats are. They're a bit grainy. But I can uh, rub them down. There's a little pit there, look, you see. All this will transfer onto the main mould when it comes out. So, all in all, soon we should have a side for that.